Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us. The County Council has taken action on the fiscal year budget proposed by County Executive Ike Leggett. Our Susan Kennedy has the details. Lorna, the County Council has adopted a $4.6 billion budget that restores funding to some services and programs that were cut during the Great Recession. They adopted the budget with guarded optimism. This is a budget that tried to balance that sense of we're beginning to emerge from the worst of a recession, but with the lingering effects of that recession. So we didn't want to go overboard. We wanted to make some restorations, but we didn't want to be reckless. We wanted to be lean, but not insubstantial. We are not yet in a position of expanding or creating new programs. But we were able to look at the um, proposal that the executive sent us, and which was, I think, a very balanced approach. And then we were able to modif modify that some with some of our um, own priorities. The budget includes just over $27 million from the shift in teacher pension costs from the state to the county. I love that. However, in a budget year that was once again complicated by a sluggish economy, the council was able to protect core services and safety net programs. My top priority is the Montgomery Cares network of community clinics that serve people without health insurance. And um, in the current fiscal year, about 30,000 uninsured patients will get to see a doctor because of this program. And in the next fiscal year, we expect that number to increase by about 4,500. In the area of public safety, the council funded 58 new positions in the police department through increased staffing and the consolidation of 911 call takers. Well, I think adding police officers was a very important part of the budget. Uh, it will help us further uh, reduce crime. The council fully funded the school's budget request for this fiscal year and also met its maintenance of effort obligation. Council members say much of the hard work that was done during last year's budget deliberations made this year's budget process a smooth one. And I think that we all feel very satisfied that taking those tough calls last year put us in a much better position this year. After the executive signs the budget, it will go into effect on July 1st. I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report this week. The county executive praised the council for approving a budget that balances many conflicting county interests and resources. Leggett affirmed that the budget continues to put the county's fiscal house in order and aligns spending with available resources in a more sustainable way. Overall, I think it was a good budget. I think the council did a very good job. Uh, I think they should be congratulated. Roger Berliner and Nancy DeBarrow, I thought, led the council into a good result. There are some differences, of course, between the executive and the council, the legislative branch of county government. But overall, I think it's a good budget. It's a very sound budget. It provides some additional resources, but also addresses some of the needs in public safety, libraries, and uh, some of the senior and recreational needs that we have in the county, but also addressing some of the challenges we have with our employees, provide some additional resources for them overall. But I think when you look at it in a comprehensive manner, it's about 98% of everything that we requested, and so I feel very good about it. Recently, the council hosted a series of speakers as part of its Shaping Our Future briefings. Those briefings were designed to assist county leaders in building a stronger economic foundation for our future. One suggestion that came out of one of the sessions was the creation of a chief innovation officer, someone to help create new economic opportunities and embrace innovation. Funding for this position was approved as part of the 2013 fiscal year budget. Well, what I hope this person will do is what this person has done in San Francisco and in Philadelphia, which is engage our community and ask our community for their notions of how we can take full advantage of all the data the county has. So that there are many communities now that are using county data to create economic opportunities, mobile apps on your phone, so that now you will know something about your community or know how to take advantage of something that you didn't previously do. So this is really about innovation. This is about changing the way our county relates to its citizens and the way in which we do our own internal business. The county's transit task force drafted a set of recommendations to the executive to plan the roadmap for a new rapid transit system that promises to tackle some of the traffic congestion and also to be environmentally friendly. 
It establishes a 160-mile innovative rapid transit system that can be built in three phases over the next 20 years to mitigate construction and affordability issues. The proposed rapid transit system uses vehicles that will operate like light rail on rubber tires. Cost for the RTV system is estimated to be at $1.3 billion in today's dollars. It identifies the challenges that we as a community face uh, that relate to our transportation problems. It makes a case for a comprehensive solution to those problems that increase people moving capacity, that uh, reduce congestion both short term and long term. We would like to remind ride-on passengers that there have been some scheduled adjustments for seven ride-on bus routes. The changes affect only the weekday schedules for routes 48, 49, 57, 58, 61, 64, and 74. No changes to the route or stop locations will be made. Ride-on makes these types of adjustments to take into account traffic conditions, construction projects, and other factors that can affect the time it takes for a bus to complete its route. To check the timetables, go to rideonbus.com or call 311. It's official. Starting in late summer, Montgomery County's MC311 Customer Service Center will extend its hours of operation. MC311 will operate Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Expanding the hours will handle an estimated 3,000 additional calls a month and accommodate residents who need to call in the evening when they get home from work. Of course, the self-service website, mc311.com, it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The call center currently handles about 40,000 calls per month. When we come back, we take you with Rockville's police chief to a local elementary school. And tell you how some MCPS students helped with a pedestrian safety campaign. We'll be right back. History comes alive during Heritage Day's weekend, June 23rd and 24th. Discover Montgomery County's historical treasures during this free countywide event. The two-day festival offers visitors an opportunity to sample numerous sites representing the history, culture, and natural beauty of Montgomery County. Join us for Heritage Days June 23rd and 24th from noon to 4 p.m. all over Montgomery County. For more information, call 301-515-0753 or go to www.heritagemontgomery.org. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Rockville 11 covers the Rockville City Police as they read to Bell Elementary School kids as part of the school's Guest Read Along program. Our Bridget Breuer has a story. Rockville City Police pride themselves on community policing, an engaged approach to keeping citizens safe. We had the opportunity to have one of our cameras at the recent Read Along Day at Bell Elementary and found out why Chief Treshik believes in this program. And I've been doing this since this program started 10, 15 years ago, and it's just a great way to get to, in touch with the younger kids, get to read a story to them, let us see us and the police officers in a different light, and more importantly, just to be able to talk with them and, and let them ask us questions about what we do, and, and it's just a good thing to do. I'm the reading specialist at Bell, so I love to read, I love to promote reading, and so we've established a guest read aloud day at Bell to encourage the community to come in and read. I think it's a great way for the kids to see members of the community reading, not just the teachers making us read. I think that they are a little excited when you see a police officer come, but when they see you sit down and read a story that we all can relate to, I think it just shows them that you know we're like their mom and dad, we're just people doing a different type of job. And then we get to talk a little bit about safety tips and issues and let them know that we're their friends and we're people that they can go to when they need help. For more on the Rockville City Police, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash police. Some MCPS students have collaborated in a pedestrian safety campaign. Here's Tom Pogue from the county's Department of Transportation with that update. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. As part of our efforts to improve pedestrian safety in areas with the highest densities of collisions, MCDOT has launched a campaign aimed at high school students in the Four Corners area of Silver Spring. 
An event was held at the Montgomery Blair High School with a professional photographer taking pictures of competing teens' eyes. The eyes of two winners will be featured on posters that urge pedestrians to establish eye contact with drivers and look both ways before crossing the street. The theme, See Them, See You. A group of Blair students was involved in developing the public education campaign aimed at teens. Collision data from these locations show that those under 20 years of age and those over 50 have been involved in the most collisions, usually during daylight hours. Montgomery Blair students will also have the opportunity to answer text message questions about pedestrian safety to win prizes while learning to be safe walkers. Participating students will receive rubber wristbands featuring reminders of safe behaviors. For more information, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov walk. We're working to keep you moving safely. The growing season is upon us and farmers markets are sprouting up all over Montgomery County. MCM's Sonia Burke recently visited a Gaithersburg market that is attracting more than just farmers. I'm at the Main Street Farmers Market in the community of Kentlands. The city of Gaithersburg hosts this farmers market, and one thing we've discovered is that farmers markets are no longer just about produce and plants. A variety of items. We have home and beauty products. We have yard art, um, ex hair accessories, clothes, you name it, we have it. Fresh flowers and fruit and vegetables are still the staples of any successful farmer's market, but in downtown Kentland, you'll find a lot more than that. Just in time for the summer barbecuing season, a meat vendor has even set up shop. We have a mixture of beef and pork. Uh, everything is pasture raised. Uh, we are preparing to bring in some goat and lamb later on in the year, uh, but everything is locally prepared. The market also features baked good vendors. If you have a sweet tooth, we found a company selling chocolate truffles, bonbons, and more. This is our first farmer's market, and we're enjoying having people taste our product uh, and, and walk away with a smile on their face. Another new vendor chose the market to market her new hair accessory business. Um, we come to Gaithersburg a lot for most of my errands and such, and so I was looking at the um, website, and I love farmer's markets. It's my favorite thing to do in the summer, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity. Marjorie Satterley knows a good opportunity when she sees it, and she said a wide variety of vendors helps her business too. I like the people here. It's, it's a nice, friendly bunch, not only the farmers and the other vendors that are with us, but the clientele that comes in. For the third year in a row, business is blooming for M&M plants. We sell bedding plants, perennials, herbs, hanging baskets, and cut flowers. We have a lot of returning customers. They know where to find us. I mean, we're in the same place every year. The Main Street Farmer's Market is open every Saturday from 10 to 2 from now until November. In Gaithersburg, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. When we come back, it's graduation celebration for Montgomery College. And we'll tell you which baseball team had an award-winning season. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. More than 800 graduates walked the stage on May 18th as Montgomery College celebrated its annual commencement ceremony. Here's a story. During the ceremony, Montgomery College President Dr. Darian Pollard gave a Changing the Odds bracelet to each graduate. The bracelet is her reminder to them. Today, you will become a part of a mighty group of committed citizens who can change the world. You can change the odds for you, your family, your community, and dare I say, this entire world. Go and do that and do it proudly. The student speakers put the words changing the odds into perspective. As a veteran under the age of 24 without a college degree, I would have a 30% chance of being unemployed, a 6% chance to live in poverty, and a 5% chance of being homeless. And most importantly, without Montgomery College, I would have a 0% chance of standing in front of you today. 
and one student speaker had a very special message for a fellow graduate. I would like to thank my most ardent cheerleader, my son, Brett. I'll never forget when I was struggling through studying, you laid your hand on my shoulder and said, Mom, relax, you've got this. Today, I'm not only proud to call you my son, but also my fellow graduate. You know, it, it really uh, it was a very, very fulfilling moment to see her accomplish something so great and something that's been so dear to her heart for so long. President Emeritus Dr. Hercules Pinckney delivered this year's commencement address and was honored by the announcement that the Plan Technology Park on the Germantown we campus would bear his name. The Hercules Pinckney Park. I cannot think of a more fitting name. Congratulations, class of 2012. There's nothing like a good old-fashioned book. Well, that was apparent at the annual Gaithersburg Book Festival. Whether you like to read, listen to, or browse books, kids and adults alike had a great time. MCPS has a story. Thousands of families packed the Gaithersburg City Hall grounds on Saturday, May 19th for a fun-filled day at the third annual Gaithersburg Book Festival. MCPS students and staff played a big part in making the event a success. This free literary event celebrates the written word, highlighting prominent local and national authors. It's a fun event and it shows us how we can all enjoy reading and it can be fun and educational and, and it really has put Gaithersburg, it's, it's, it, Gaithersburg is always on the map, it just put us as a bigger star on the map. Attendees participated in an array of activities from meeting renowned authors, hearing live musical performances, to visiting the celebrity stage, where local celebrities read popular children's books throughout the day. Superintendent of Schools Joshua Starr was one of the featured celebrities. He read The Little Engine That Could by Waddy Piper. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths, a dining car. Finalists from the high school short story contest were announced during the festival. First, second, and third place winners had an opportunity to share their winning entries with the audience. Reading and writing allows people to escape into their own thoughts and to other people's thoughts. And for adults and children, it was a chance to get lost in the exciting world of books. I love a good book, and I think that a festival like this, that's as popular as this, really honors the written word, and whether it's on your Nook, your Kindle, a real book, it's wonderful that it's still around, and I'm excited to be a part of this. I make sure she reads a book every night, and I'm trying to get all the kids in my class to do the same. I like to read comedy a lot. Well, I like to read, like, mystery books. It was another award-winning season for MC's Germantown campus baseball team. Here's MCTV's Michael Brown with a look at what they accomplished. Since the arrival of Dan Rasher as the head coach of MC's Germantown campus baseball team seven years ago, the team has made a habit of winning championships and garnering all sorts of postseason individual honors. Under Rasher, the team has regularly won region titles and advanced to the Junior College World Series. But earlier this season, it looked like this might be the year they came up short. Playing a brutally tough early season schedule, the team struggled during their March trip to Florida, and with just a month to go in the season, the team's record was below 500. But much to the chagrin of the rest of Maryland Juco baseball, Germantown all of a sudden turned it around. They got healthier, their bats came alive, their pitching came around, and the defense tightened and the results were impressive. They reeled off 21 wins in their last 30 games and once again dominated the Region 20 tournament in all phases of the game to earn their sixth trip in the last seven seasons to the Division III World Series in Tyler, Texas. And while they came up short in the series, that disappointment doesn't diminish what was another fine season. Along the way, head coach Dan Rasher recorded his 200th career win at Germantown, and a number of players won postseason honors. Travis Smith, Matt Selmer, and Chris Kaiser made the all-region team, and Selmer hurled his way to first-team all-Maryland JUCO honors by posting a 7-4 record, a sterling 1.80 ERA, and 83 strikeouts in 74 innings. 
When we come back, fluttering butterflies are attracting thousands of county residents. We'll tell you where. MC celebrated the class of 2012 at its commencement ceremony on May 18th. You can watch the college's largest ever graduating class receive their honors on Montgomery College Television and MC's YouTube channel. The festivities honor graduates from all three campuses and from workforce development and continuing education programs. Two MC security officers were recently honored with the Heart Saver Hero Award for saving the life of a student on the Rockville campus. Officers Rodriguez and Wilson performed life-saving CPR on a student who had stopped breathing in her classroom. MC's Students and Free Enterprise team won its sixth regional championship. The competitors showcased their projects, which are intended to improve the quality of life for people in their communities. MC's team now heads to Kansas City to compete for the national title. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Kenlands Lakelands Dog Show attracted a field of 55 dogs for some tail wagging fun. I'm Sonia Burke at the Kenlands Lakelands Dog Show with my new best friend Cody. Cody's often described as a bear when he's out on walks in the community. Most of the other dogs we met here today were a bit smaller. In fact, the small dog category was the biggest event of the dog show with a field of 28 dogs weighing 25 pounds or less, parading around the grassy ring for the judges. And that's our largest category. I guess this neighborhood has a plethora of tiny little dogs. Just as they ranged in size, the dogs varied in breed, from mutts to purebreds. Still, we wondered if there were any similarities between the Kentland Show and the Westminster Dog Show. There's no comparison at all. It's, it's more silly than serious, and it's all in good fun. You know, we're raising money for great causes. Yet these dog owners' love for their pets is just as intense. She won the dog show. <laughs> it's her first time. Several dogs showed off their fashion sense by dressing up for the costume contest. Another crowd pleaser, best trick. Henry and his owner gave us a sneak preview of his talent for sneezing on demand. Oh, yes, Henry. Yes. Who can do that? Unbelievable! While some dogs were performing, we found others barking, <coughs> playing frisbee, and could it be catnapping? On the sidelines, a former show dog winner. He's he's won uh, like three straight years uh, prior, so I thought I'd give someone else a chance, but. Um, we're just going to go as observers this year. Frenchie's officially retired now. Win or lose, there were dog treats for all, and proceeds from this canine event were divided between the Kentlands Community Foundation, Critters for the Cure, and Mutt's Matter Rescue. In Gaithersburg, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. Now let's go to Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society to meet our adoptable pet of the week. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope at the Montgomery County Humane Society with your Pet of the Week. And today we are featuring Tyler. He is an older gentleman. He is very sweet. And unfortunately for Tyler, his family had to relocate. And they were very, very sorry, but they had to leave him here. They weren't allowed to take him where they were moving. And he unfortunately is now here and he is looking for a home. They, we know a lot about him because he was relinquished. And he is a very sweet dog. He loves kids. He loves other dogs. He rarely barks. He walks well on a leash. He is about as nice of a dog as you could look for because he's mature. He's not going to be chewing up your furniture or your shoes. He's not going to be peeing in the house. He's fully housebroken. And he's really very sweet. I wish you could feel him. He's a very soft dog. He is a mix between a chow chow and a border collie. He's really a nice guy. He's very healthy. He has a good number of years left to go in his life. And you really want to come down and meet him because remember, puppies are a lot of fun. But they do chew up your shoes and your furniture and they do pee in the house. And sometimes it's very hard to housebreak certain dogs. And this dog already has learned good habits instead of bad habits. So you'll have a very easy transition in adopting him into your house. Like I said, he loves kids and other dogs. I'm not too sure about how he is with cats. But knowing him, he's very calm. I have a feeling that he'd have no problem with cats whatsoever. And he's a leaner. He likes to lean in. He likes to cuddle. This is a very special dog, but he does need someone who's willing to take an older dog. The mature animals are the hardest for us to place. So if you have room in your heart for an older guy, 
definitely come on down and meet Tyler. Visit him on the web at mcumaine.org or give us a call at 240-773-5967 because you definitely want to meet Tyler and take him home with you. It's a time of the year again at Brookside Gardens. Wings of Fancy, the butterfly exhibit, is in full swing. Let's go to Brookside. Welcome. Here we are at the Wings of Fancy Butterfly Exhibit at Brookside Gardens Conservatory. Um, inside this greenhouse, we have butterflies from all over the world flying around freely among plants that provide them with nectar. You can see the entire life cycle of the butterfly when you come here from eggs to caterpillars to the pupa to the flying adults. We also want you to just enjoy the motion and the color and the just um, kind of the fantasy land that this greenhouse becomes when it just becomes um, butterfly world. So it's really a special event uh, that runs for a limited time from May through mid-September and it's open every day. A visit to the exhibit is a great thing to do even if you're just um, a mom and a child or uh, you've got friends visiting from out of town but the butterfly exhibit has become a really popular destination for group visits of all kinds um, and we do ask that if you are thinking of bringing a group of 15 or more to the butterfly exhibit that you please call ahead and make a reservation so that we know that you're coming. During May and September in the mornings from 10 to 1 we have a large number of school groups that make reservations and come and get tours of the exhibit. So uh, make sure that you get a chance to come down and visit, bring your friends and family. It's really an interesting, exciting exhibit, not just for children, um, but for adults and groups of, of all ages and kinds. Summer is here and the county's Department of Recreation officially opened the outdoor pools on May 26. Maintaining public safety is a priority at all of the county's pools. It is important to remember that if capacity is reached during peak times, it may be necessary to halt admission to pools. Swimmers are admitted as soon as space becomes available. Here is the list of those pools and their locations. Happy summer, everyone. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to friend us on Facebook and join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for watching. Throughout the month of May, the Montgomery County Police Department is participating in the nationwide Click It or Ticket campaign. The Click It or Ticket campaign focuses on the enforcement of the seatbelt laws in the state of Maryland. The reason I'm flagging you over, you're not wearing your seatbelt. Also during the Click It and Ticket campaign this year, the Montgomery County Police are introducing a nighttime campaign. This has become a primary focus of the Click It and Ticket campaign because although Maryland's compliance rate during the daytime has reached 95%, studies have shown that nighttime seatbelt usage dropped drastically. This is unfortunate because during the nighttime is when drivers are more likely to be involved in collisions that cause serious injury or death. Um, it doesn't carry any points, but it is $25. I do need your signature at the very bottom. There's yeah. two copies of the citation. There's information on the back of each copy. So Montgomery County Police would like to remind all citizens the importance of wearing their seatbelt and that they will be enforcing seatbelt laws 24 hours a day during this campaign.